Right, this is the front master cylinder. As usual, I've got the obligatory cup of coffee. Right, we've taken this one to bits, and as you can see, it's not very good. Um, so, we bought a repair kit. There's the repair kit. But first things first, we've had given this a clean. <coughs> Excuse me. We've given all the bits and pieces a good clean. Um, but there's still a little bit of uh, corrosion and muck down there. I don't know if you can see that properly. There you go. So we need to clean that out. Um, and as usual, it will be the turn of the wire brush in the Dremel. The little... Um, Oh bugger if I can get my words out. The little uh, brass wire brush. Brass wire brush, that's what I'm trying to say. Right, here we go. Brass wire brush. <laughs> uh, bought off our favourite auction site um, in big bundles. Cheap as chips. Um, they don't last five minutes, but they do the job. And that's all that you need. So, we've got our master cylinder. We've got our wire brush. Let's get cracking. Right, we've got a lot of that out there. But there's just a couple of little bits I just can't get to. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to change the wire brush. Because that wire brush is just a little bit on the big side. So what we'll do is, we'll use a cup brush. Just to finish that bottom off, because it's, um, it's a little bit wide, is that other one? Right. Got it. <sighs> okay. See if I can get that on cat on shot so you can see it. It's not a very good angle, is it? There we go. All nice and clean. You can see the groove there where the circlip sits. Okay. The bar's all nice and clean. Uh, all nice and shiny. Let's see if I can get that in shot for you. There you go. All nice and clean. So, without further ado, let's pop it all back together. Right, so things to go together in that order, basically. We've got our obligatory silicone grease there. Um, spring. Seal. Piston with seal, circlip, and then dust cover. Right, so that spring sits with the, that little nipple there on that seal sits in that hole like that. Okay, so you must make sure you get that seal the right way around. If that seal goes in the wrong way around, your brakes won't work. It's as simple as that. You won't even be able to do anything with them, they'll just not work. Right, so let's put a, a little bit of the old. Silicon on that. Again, you don't want loads of this stuff. Loads of this stuff is not what you're looking for. You just want light smearing. Right, drop that into there, like that. Next is your main piston. I'm just literally, literally putting the slightest smallest 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 mount you can imagine on there you don't want loads on because don't forget this thing uses brake fluid that's in and then we just literally ease that in and that little bit of silicon there helps that piston go in without the rubber chafing on the side walls of the cylinder bore the next thing is your circlip these are quite easy to do, but they're really fiddly to do on camera. So that circlip has to go in that hole while you're holding that piston down. Right, so let's give it a go. There's your circlip on the pliers. Like you so. It's hard to do in shot. Right, so what I'm going to do is, actually I might be better. I'd be better using, I might be better using angle pliers. Hang on a minute, let me get the angle pliers out. These are really tricky to get in at these, really, really tricky. 
you can have hours of fun. You can have hours of fun finding the, finding the circlip when it's sprung off your circlip pliers and it's in the corner at garage under a pile of rubbish somewhere. It's, um, yeah, tricky. So, we've got our piston in, squeeze our circlip and in it goes. That's not quite all the way in because them pliers aren't quite long enough so I'm going to have to revert back to these pliers to push it all the way home. And there we are, the circlip's in. Just make sure that's all the way home. Push it down to the bottom with a... Oh, there we go. It clicked into place. You heard that. So that's the circlip in place. I'll give you that in shot. There you go. So your circlip's in, your piston's in. Okay, so the next thing is your rubber seal. Right, what I'm going to do... So I'm just going to put a bit of silicon on the end of that. Because these rubber seals can be a little bit of a pain to get into place. I'm going to put a little bit of silicon on the end of that as well. There we go. Right. So what we've got to do, we've got to get that in there, like that. And we've got to put that over the head of that push rod like that. So when you push that down, that push rod, that uh, seal, sorry, is supposed to stop ingress of garbage really, rubbish, water, moisture. I don't know really. I don't know. I'm waffling, aren't I? Right. Um, yeah, it's supposed to stop ingress, so we just make sure, without pu without puncturing it with screwdriver of course, make sure that that's all the way bottomed out, so that, that seal is all the way at the bottom of that groove there, pushed right down so it's tight up to the circlip, and there we go, master cylinder assembled, raring to go, right next thing then. We just put the top on that silicone grease and we don't end up with loads of crap and dust and muck in it because we've got to try and keep grease clean. Right. Underneath your uh, master cylinder you have a hole for a switch. There's your switch, that's your brake light switch. That goes on there with a screw. Don't forget folks, GIS screwdriver. These aren't Phillips or Torx or bloody posy. They are JIS screws. Use a JIS screwdriver. Over tighten that and you'll bust it. That's it. That's the brake light switch in place. That brake light switch doesn't look very clever. I'll see if I've got another one of those. Right. Uh, next thing. We've got our handlebar thing that goes on there. But we'll put that on after. That's fine. We've got our pivot bolt which goes in there. For, oh, get it in shot, get it in shot man goes in there for the lever we'll put that on after right so before I put the lid on we've got the lid there they're in shot with its bits and pieces and its screws right you've got two tiny holes in there the bigger hole of the two is the main feed into the cylinder the little hole of the two is the it is for bleeding it, it lets air out and it allows when you pre when the piston goes down, the oh, I'm, I'm getting all bloody six and two threes with my explanation now. When the piston goes down the bar, the main cup that you saw me put in, the first one that was on the end of the spring, is almost at that hole. So when you push the piston in, the seal covers that hole, that tiny little hole at the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. I'll, I'll mark it with a screwdriver. There we are. That tiny little hole there. The piston, as it as you squeeze the lever, covers that hole and compresses the fluid. And when it comes back, the seal uncovers that hole and allows more fluid in. So it's crucial that that little hole there, the tiniest, tiniest little hole, is absolutely clear. You must make sure it's not blocked, it's got no crap in it. But the only, th the only thing you need to be careful of is poking it with bits of wire poking it with small drill bits and things like that you'll do damage to the size of that hole it's that size for a reason so make sure it's clean make sure it's clear make sure you can see through it what i quite often do is shine a torch up the bar when it's in when it's disassembled and you can see light through it to make sure it's clear right so without further ado we've got our next bit which is the top which is the rubber diaphragm that goes on top of it then you've got a plastic piece that goes in the top of the rubber diaphragm that holds the rubber diaphragm in place stops it deforming and 
then you've got the lid two screws job done put the lid on make sure now these screws aren't very pretty so what i might end up doing i've got some somewhere in a box as usual is some stainless replacements i'll probably end up putting stainless replacements in there simply because it looks pretty right put that lid on so that muck don't get in there and there's our stainless banjo bolt put that in there stop muck getting in there and that's basically it folks that's your master cylinder that's it obviously they go on to your handlebars uh, when, when you attach it to the bike that's for the lever when you put the lever on which I'll come to later that's it that's all there is to it folks oh I tell you what I need to just point out to you quickly before I go these caps when it goes onto the handlebars they have up written on them yeah right it's important that you put that to the top where the arrow is the reason for that is when you put the master cylinder on the bike get it in shot get it in shot when you put the master cylinder on the bike you tighten the top bolt first I shall demonstrate that's why it's got up written on it I'll show you what happens when you tighten the top bolt first let's get it in shot that's it right here we go right when you nip that top bolt up like you saw if you look at it sideways are you ready for this there you go when these are manufactured they're manufactured with a gap there so what you do is when you fit this to the handlebar you tighten the top bolt first nip that right up and then your bottom bolt is your bit that when you tighten it it squeezes it onto handlebar so because the because of that discrepancy when the manufacturer you must always tighten the top bolt first if you tighten the bottom bolt first and then use the top one uh, you'll find that the bolt will twist so make sure you tighten the top one first there you go folks right that's it master cylinder done moving on to the next job i'll see you in a bit